concerned about is, is I heard there's something happening at 9 30 this morning. Maybe the opening of the showroom. We know about it. Uh, we're going to wrap up what we're doing uh, about 9 20. We've got a few things to announce at the end, and we'll have to go out of here at 9 25. We're playing time. We want to the to be there for the opening of the showroom. Okay. Next, anybody have a clue? No. Nope. Anybody? If you multiply 365 by 24, that's the number of hours that there are in a year. <laughs> and this happens to be my favorite hour. It's my hour that I get each year to address this group, to talk about the things that I really like to do. So I just want to let you know, first of all, first of all this is my favorite hour of all 8,766 hours I get each year. So you yeah, probably feel good here. Thank you. Next. <laughs> well, the higher-ups here decided, you know, I turned 60 this year, kind of going around a bit, that I needed an assistant. So they asked who would be my assistant for this, and as many hands are raised right now, that's the response they get. <laughs> <laughs> So they put their heads together and they said, instead of calling it assistance, let's call it executive producer. Okay? So the sucker who's raised their hand, I mean the executive producer, is someone you know. He's very active in the club. He does a lot for us. It's Jim Falls. My executive producer today. He's going to run the computer while I get to talk to all of you. Senior executives. Senior executives. All right, so next. No, that's Jim. <laughs> <laughs> you got what you paid for. You got that. Okay. Now, we, we, we rehearsed this extensively about 15 minutes ago. He saw it for the first time. So we've got about five minutes worth of rehearsals under our belt. But we're going to make this a good event for you guys. The first thing is I want to plug the, uh, the Jackie Vaughn exhibit at the El Cortez. That opened up on Tuesday. Now everybody who was at the banquet got one of these. And I think it's worth about $18 admission. It's easily worth that and a lot more. Anybody that I know that's seen the exhibit, and I've seen it, has been overwhelmed. It greatly exceeds your expectations for the stuff that they have there related to our hobby. So if you have one of these, I strongly suggest you use it. And while you're there, just two short blocks away is the El Cortez. You could go up there. And you know, the way that I put it, the Museum of Gaming History had a real long pregnancy. <laughs> About five years or so, we've been trying to do something. And we gave birth on Tuesday. Our birth, our first baby, is this exhibit. And it's an example of what we can do with the help of the entire community. So I think you ought to go see the baby and show your support for the club. Okay? That's it. That's it. <laughs> so what are we going to talk about? Um, I always do the history of the chip guide. I want to give credit to those who deserve credit. I'm going to talk about what we've been doing in the last year since we got the opportunity to talk last year. Uh, we're going to have some top quizzes, stay awake, and win some prizes. And we'll talk about the things major contributors to the trip guide, we'll talk about the administrators, and then we'll break into the meat of the presentation, we'll show you some secrets of the chip guide. You know, even if you're an experienced user, I'm sure there's some things you don't know about that will make the experience a lot better for you. And then at the end, we have a surprise announcement. So history of the chip guide. We all know Greg Susan started the chip guide originally. It was the riverboat. Uh, catalog that was a paper document and then he made it into a website he expanded the website so it wasn't only river boats it became Indian reservations and 
then Nevada dollar chips, which he collected, and uh, Maryland chips, and a bunch of other places. And you, you know, we know Fred passed away in 2008. And in 2009, uh, next slide, 2009, um, Cal Susong donated the content of the chip guide to the club. And I was the webmaster at that time, and I said, wow, this is a big deal. We've got to get it from where it was to where it is, and made a transition. And we took the chip guide from what's called a static website to a dynamic website. And just for those who are not computer savvy, explain what that means. Static means I went on a word processor, and I typed up 1,100 pages, one for each casino. Dynamic means we put all that information into a database. So if I wanted to make one change on the old website, I had to do it 1,100 times. On the new website, I do it once. And then every time you ask for a page, it will bring up the new page. So it gives us a lot of new function, and that's why you see all the different things that we could do with the chip guide. So, um, we added a chip guide update facility that allows us to manage the content and add new stuff, make changes, and we added a staff of 15 administrators, and a few of them are here this morning. So that's how we process all your submissions. Um, besides just having casino chips, we added all different types of collectibles, and we'll talk about that a little bit later what kind of collectibles we put in the chip guide, and then we finally expanded it and made it global. So we have stuff from all over the world. We keep on making ongoing and global improvements, and those improvements come from you, because I've already thought I figured out everything that you needed, but I keep on getting suggestions, and that's how we improve the chip guide. So if you've got an idea, let us know about it. Where's that guy? So we, the chip guide administrators had a meeting, practice meeting yesterday morning. This is my to-do list for the next year on things that we need to make improvements on. And we keep on getting on them. So let us know. We're not shy. And uh, now we currently have over 131,000 items on the chip guide. Next slide. So what, we, what have we been doing the last year? Uh, one of the major things that we did was we added an other stuff category. So if there's something that's gaming related, but it doesn't fit into a particular location, uh, it goes into the other stuff area. And that other stuff area could be things like advertisers who make the scene of uh, But it's not used in the playing of the game. And that's where your matchbooks and ashtrays uh, uh, postcards, things like that. And those items are important. A lot of times the only reference we have to a location of a casino is on a matchbook or on a postcard. So it provides some historical information, provides a picture of the location. So that's why those items are there. It's got to have a logo or a picture. Hey, higher ups, this executive producer thing is working out real well. <laughs> okay, next slide. So, we had new content and we have new functions. The first major change that we made this year was we became too popular and too big. And people coming to the chip guide were getting a message said something like, server error 500, we're too busy, come back later. So, uh, we knew it was going to happen someday. We got approval <coughs> to spend a lot more money on uh, hosting our website. We moved from what's called a shared server, where we're on a server with many other websites, to our own dedicated server. So we now have a full server running our workload, and I've noticed that once we did that, all of those errors went away, and now we have more room, and we have more capacity. So that was a big change. We added the chip guide profiles function. I'll see it a little bit later on. But that's the ability to customize the chip guide 
so that it has the content that you're interested in. If you only collect Tito's, you can create a profile full of Tito's. When you come on the chip guide, all you see is Tito's. And everything else will not be there. You won't see uh, chips or postcards or anything else. You just see Tito's. And you get to select which categories you want and create a profile. So it's a way to customize the chip guide for your individual needs. The second part of that will happen in the next year, and that's when you'll be able to select what kind of casinos you see on the chip guide. So if you don't want to see brothels or fraternal organizations or anything that's not a real casino, you could weed them, filter them out, and then see only that stuff. So it's a way of filtering so you can only see the stuff that you're interested in. Um, we made, we worked with Quad Baker a lot to make uh, slot cards for it. So we made a lot of little enhancements in there. Al Scalzo uh, worked to fill in all the empty chip guide numbers. There were gaps. Gaps were sometimes created because we put something in, found out it was a duplicate, deleted one of them, things like that. The original chip guide had a lot of gaps. So we spent the whole year going in and manually fixing that so that we no longer had any gaps. Uh, chip guide numbers. Uh, finally, we made a major update to make the administrator's life easy and we enhanced the update facility. We now call it content management and added a lot of function there to help get your submissions on the chip guide a lot faster. Next slide. Finally, every year since I've been doing this, there was a guy who sat in the seat over here, Jim Nall. And um, attended all our seminars, became friendly with them, and he's the guy who wrote the Tito book. And he started sending us Tito's, and it was a laborious process to orient them, crop them, and get them on the chip guide. Then I taught my class on how to do, uh, how to submit, how to prepare images to go on the chip guide. He was the first guy to do that do it well enough so that when he did a submission, his stuff was as good as ours or better, and we didn't have to spend any time doing that, so we could get his items on the trip guide real quick. So he's got over 3,000 Tito's that he donated the, the scans to the chip guide, and they're out there in over 3,500 items. So he passed away this year, and we'll miss him. Whenever I look at where Robert's sitting right now, I'm going to remember that's where Jim and Lisa sits. So we'll miss him and we thank him for his contributions. Next. So, first pop quiz. <coughs> How many casinos are on the chip guide? 1,100. 1,100. 1,236. It was 1,100 when Greg gave us the chip guide. We've grown a little since then. <coughs> Any other guesses? 1,237. <laughs> 1,529. You get one of these. 6,500. All right. <laughs> Go to the next one. As of June 13th, 11,599. Somebody said 6,000. Yes. So you were close. 5,000 offer. <laughs> <laughs> So that's how much work we've been doing. All right, next slide. We want to talk about the contributors. The names, these names up here that you're looking at, they're the superstars. They're the people who put in thousands of items that we currently have on the chip guide. Um, there's Greg, who did the original chip guide. Alex Salento, I saw him here this morning. Alex donated. What, a nearly complete set of every chip ever issued? That's what my sister says, but uh, <laughs> I don't have every chip. In Vegas. So that, that was a system. And by the way, Alex was the guy who did, donated all the Vegas chips that we have at the display at the old Cortez. You want to see some Z12 chips? You'll see them out of the exhibit. By the way, thank you for using donate. Uh, That's donate. Oh, 
And then we have Janice O'Neill's casino reports, and on and on and on. All these great people help the, uh, the hobby by going, scanning and donating those to the, the guy. And there's over 500 other people who have made smaller contributions, but they're all valuable. We appreciate all of them. I hope to see that coming in. Thanks. And then I always like to give a plug for the administrators. These are the guys who sit at the computer on a daily basis, look at your submissions, edit the images so that they meet our guidelines, and then put them up on the check line. So thanks for all of that. Next one. So now we get into the secrets of the chip guy. And I didn't ask somebody, but I need a cue at 920 so we can wrap it up. Okay, thanks. Bro. So let's get out of this escape. Excellent. It's starting to work. And let's go down, put on uh, Firefox. And here we are on the chip guy. Now this version of the chip guy, I didn't want to be dependent on an internet connection. We had a couple of technical issues last year. So we're now running off of my laptop. Maybe a little bit slower. I might have missed a thing or two, but it's pretty much all there. Um, now if you hit F11, that will put us in full screen. It's right between the head and 12.
the UK have actually changed the brass? If they use the same stuff, if the same management and they use the same stuff, we usually, in the comments area, at the bottom, say that there was a location change. Sometimes somebody else buys it, new management, new chips, then we'll have two separate casinos for the two, two locations. Charles, do the two empty boxes on the top have any meaning? Those are where pictures go. If you see empty boxes over there, we're looking for logos and we're looking for a picture of the place. And we just haven't been able to find them. And that again was not an original part of the chip tax, so it's a lot of the old stuff we kept in catch-up mode. And some of the stuff we just can't find. Like for this example, uh, the Nevada Hotel was one of, in, in downtown Vegas was one of Jackie Vaughn's locations. I can't find pictures of the place. We had our historian look for them. I'm a Google expert, I look for them. The only, the only picture that we could use that was a good amount of quality has uh, the place closed up with five wood over the front door with the words closed. You have a this morning. You show <laughs> yeah, so, but that's it. So some of this stuff is hard to get. So that's why we collect these images because if it's hard to get now, it'll be impossible in the future. So the time to get it is while the casino was open. So if you've got a picture of the place, you know where the logo is, let us know, and um, we can get it up there. Yes? I, I was curious how you uh, submit the uh, like pictures because of the limitation on the size of uh, the EPI on the, we send it to the regular form. How do you send uh, the new logos and maybe extra pictures? If you've got something that's, if you've got something that's, you know, the, the size restriction that we put on it, we figured that's usually good enough for most stuff. If you've got something that's larger, contact one of the administrators and email it directly. But if you just use the regular submission process to submit the information for the you yes. like to do the casino. Yeah. Okay. Chuck, yes, you We, yes, we have that. There are those three categories. If it's a chip and it's got a name on it, it's got something on it that can identify it, yes. If it's gaming related, yes. If it's casino related and it has a picture of the place or logo on it, then we want it. Okay. So, but, so we have Harley Davidson chips up there. I don't want anything else from Harley Davidson other than the chips because it has nothing to do with gaming. Even the tabletops, I don't think there's a tabletop out there. There might be one or two. Okay. And I was thinking last night, I don't know why, but people collect slot machines. We have I don't think we have any slot machines up on the chip back. Yeah. We have a couple of pictures. A couple of pictures? Okay. Yeah, I don't think we have anything like, you know, a, a golden nugget logo slot machine. Okay. Uh, what's next on the list? Exactly, the producer. Chip shirts. All right, let's go to that. So every once in a while, you'll have a chip and you'll have a chip guide number on it, but you forgot where the location is. So you could, or let's do it for. All right, let's do it that way. Just put in one. So you can put in the chip bag number and hit search or shout. And it will find that on the chip guide very quickly and bring it to you. Um, let's go back. And let's enter in N on the catalog number side. N, one, two, three, four. So that's a TCR chip rack number. If you hit search, it brings you to, it look, finds that on the chip guide, and it brings you right to that item. So if you, have, you want to look up something, if you've got a catalog number, or you've got the chip guide number, you're not sure what casino it is, or you want to get to it quickly, that's the way to do it. Let's go to casino search now. So, um, Let's say you have a chip on it. 
you have a chip and all it says on it is AHP. My executive producer will key in AHP. Some of the letters are missing. Oh, yes. <laughs> I, I, I wore them out. And it's a, you will find out that the Aladdin Hotel issued a chip for the poker room that just says AHP on it. And if you click on it, you will see that information. And if uh, you have a situation where there's a casino, but it had some chips issued under other names, we create a see the other casino link. So you can click on Aladdin, and now you can see all this stuff. And is the AHP dollar chip in there? Or is it at the bottom? There it is. So this is how, if you've got something with just initials on it, you could look, find out where it was located. You could go to the casino search, type in what you see on the chip, get a hit back, and then click on it, and it'll eventually get you where you want to go. All right. Minimum of three initials. Excuse me? Minimum of three initials? No. If it was three, now you can even do it on two. Would it enter AH? Would that work for this? Or? And then try it out. So we'll put it on. Go ahead. Go back to uh, the casino search. AH. And search. Well, I just see one. Put that there. All right. Uh, and there it is. It's there. So, so that would be every chip that has AH. Someplace in the name together. Okay. What's next on this? Oh, I love this. <coughs> you click on it? Yes. Okay, it's going to take a couple of seconds because this is this requires a lot of computer uh, capability. Okay. So what this is is it's a big filtering system. You start out by getting every item on the chip guide. It shows you right now total found. 130,734, and if you would go page by page, it would be 2,615 pages. So, anybody have a particular thing they like to collect? Just parrots? Parrots? Parrots. Parrots. Um, we don't have that facility yet, but we're going to work. We're working on that. But something like. Dollar chips from cards with cards on them. Excuse me. Chips with cards on them. We, we, okay. That we can't do. What we can do if you just want to see Tito's for certain area collectible types locations. German. German. So we go to region and we click on Europe, and then we go to state and click select Germany. Anything particular in Germany? Chips? No, uh, we can't go into city yet. But just chips or all kinds of collectibles? Just chips. So go into collectible time. What kind of kind of collectible time? And just have on chips all. And you query. What it's going to do is just take all the German chips, most of what we have in the chip. Amazing. And you can see it by an image, but let's say you'd like to print out a checklist where it says image. No, no. It's a drop down. It's there. Click on caps and hit query there. Now you see something that looks like a chip rack version of what you just saw visually. So it's got the name of the casino, location, when it was open, and then a list of all those things. And the items are clickable. So if you go to the chip diagram and click one of those. Okay. Uh, if you click on the browser back button. Just 
click on on trip back where so there you go. So this is a facility that lets you look at this if you collect let's say ballot chips from Arizona, you can see an entire list of everything that we have, see if you're missing some items. You can create a checklist for it and print it out. Uh, anybody else want to take a stab at this? Something that Promotional chips from Colorado. Promotional chips from Colorado. So region is United States. And state is Colorado. And for a collectible type, I would say other chips. Because we don't do odds and ends chips. That's it. And it's weird. So these are all the odds and end chips that we have. Some of them are promotional and there's some other ones here, but we don't particularly track promo chips. Okay. Uh, could you put in like say, uh, you collect GPI samples? Or, or, or uh, pulse GPI samples? samples is well, a part pulse of, uh, let's, let's, you pulse bring up another them. part. Let's, let's leave chip back to query facility. Let's go back to the These are the different categories of stuff we have in the other stuff area. The advertising chips, the age pod rooms, the model of strip clubs, casino management, and so forth. So these are all things that are not location related. And that includes the white chips, the stuff from cruise ships and the unidentified chips. So you mentioned you wanted to see uh Olson samples. Samples of other manufacturers. So these are all the items that were manufacturer samples that we have up on the chip pack. So if we go to, do you have GPI in there? So go to Gaming Partners International and click on it. And now these are all the GPI sample chips and other stuff that we have on the chip pack. <laughs> And some of them we have a few, others we have hundreds in, in the list. So we do have GPI sample chips here. Oh, is it, does everybody know about the collapsed sections? Go up to the top, collapse all. So this is a way of uh, limiting how big a page is. <laughs> Some of the pages get real big. So each section can be opened up individually by clicking on one of the green bars. So if you want to see the sample chips, you click on it and then all the sample chips come up. And you can also open them all at the same time. Okay, we have all the color samples. So these green bars and red, these green buttons and red buttons allow you to open and close a particular section just to make it easier to look at a web page. Is there like a page two to this or is, is that the end? Would that no, be there are more. If you oh. click, on, click on the no catch value. This is the end of the manufacturer right. samples. Oh, okay. And then it goes to the end of the category. Oh, okay. All right. There are, there are also no cash value sample chips. All right. Anything else? Let's go back. Charles, yeah. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. 10 minutes. We've got to close up already. Yeah. Wow. I'll hold the show up. So, Charles, 10 minutes. We've got 10 minutes. Oh, I still have 10 minutes more. Oh, it's 10 minutes. What else do we have? Quick view. Quick view. Okay. So, click on quick view. <laughs> quick view. Instead of seeing everything in one long page, you could see something that looks like a catalog page with all the items side by side next to each other. 
So we have list view, click on that. That's the regular page look. And if you want to see it in a condensed format, so you might want to print it out, you can hit list view. Hit expand all. Expand all up the side, you know. And that's a regular size. If you want them bigger or smaller, go to the top and hit columns eight. So you could get eight across instead of the normal six across. If you want to see them bigger, hit columns four. And now you can see them in larger format. So we're trying to make it so that we're accommodating all the collectors in different ways they like to see things. Okay. What's next on this? We did just come to the So click on the if you don't remember that page we put up before that lists all the contributors and what they do, um, you can actually see a list of all the contributors and what they've, how much they've donated. And if you actually click on large uh, tags from Al Scalzo, well, let's do Max Bush from Al Scalzo. No, 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 you get to see all the matchbooks that that contributor put into the chip pack. Now this is the stuff that we can do because we have a dynamic website and we go to the database and say, give us everything that was contributed by Al Scalzo and is a matchbook. And then we get to see that list. You can't do it if you have the static website. And question? Yes. Back to the previous pages where you had the chips uh, a row of eight and then you want, if you want to see them larger. If you put them to the, the four chips, could you uh, scan it, scan the, the complete row uh, to see that all the eight chips are the same size? No, they're different sizes. So what, what we what, do is we have a certain size of images that we keep. And to get them six across, they're 240 pixels wide. And if we get um, eight across, then we have to make them smaller. So okay, I, I understand that. that. But if if you want to see eight, you you'll arrange it for its eight. If you want if you want a closer look at the chips, they turn into four. But my question is, can you can you can you uh, uh, scan the, the, the that particular row so that you can see all eight? Not not at one time, but the first four and the second four. Um, I'm not, not sure I'm getting you, so when we're done, come up and ask me, okay? Okay. I'm not sure I'm I don't think, what do you mean, I don't think it'll, you've got a different page you're working with, and you're only working with a page so with four on it. So, so you, you're working on a page of four yeah. only. So, yeah. something that happened to you this year is there's a little section called Member Services underneath the features, and this is how we do profiles. So. First thing I want to do is, before we get into that, go to Chip Pack homepage, click on Nevada, let's go back to Nevada, and the Aladdin Resort. And hit expand all. So now we have this huge page with all these items, but we didn't expand it all. Oh, no, that's all right, just leave it. Bring, bring it to the bottom of the page. And these are all the different types of categories of stuff that we have for the Aladdin Resort. Okay, so we have this huge, huge page that has chips, limited edition chips, corner chips, all this stuff. I don't, I don't want to collect table chips. Yeah. I don't want to see the chips. So let's go back to the top. Big frame on that, but when you make it smaller, on then you reduce the page so that you can't. You have to go back to the original page. And just, just hit the uh, stage bar here.
I can activate profiles. So where it says profiles, click on profiles. I play it, created a few. The one that says chips to, click on now where it says active. Active. The active button right there. So now what I've done is I've activated a profile that just allows me to see chips and nothing else. Everything else will not be there. So if I go back to home page, Nevada, and the Latin Resort. Up, oh, got a little glitch. But if you go to the bottom, do just collapse all. All I see, I guess I have more than that. I see business parts and other items. But if I had done this right, you would only see chips in the category, and all the other stuff would have gone away. And you could set that up and customize it to any what anything. If you collect ashtrays and postcards and just table chips, you could set a profile for that, and that's all you see. And the other stuff will go away. Now, this is something new, and we're getting feedback on it. And does that mean I have 12 minutes or two? Two. Two minutes. <laughs> so it's 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 18. Okay. So we'll be wrapping this up. So. With, Profile stuff is new, and we're learning, and we're making enhancements on it. But the, the, again, the aim is to make the experience meet your individual needs. So you'll be able to see the collectible items that you want, and only the casino types that you want. So. Give you a hint. What was the answer of that? How do you know it was the one top, but they tried to open up the casino and didn't get a license. What was the name of that casino? King's Crown. King's Crown. Okay. Just put it in the mix. Yes, I opened the double. We showed you in the casino history. We showed you it was King's Crown that. They would deny the license, and then it came Milton, Krells, Aladdin, and so forth through the years. Okay, next slide. So, we have a major announcement. <coughs> After doing this for this many years and getting involved in a lot of different stuff, I'm going to step aside. I'll still be here as a partner, but Al Scalzo is stepping up, and he's going to assume day-to-day -day responsibilities for running the chip guy. So it's going to be the same but better because um, Apple's going to have more time to devote to this to interface with you guys, to interface with all the administrators, get more of what you're doing into our requirements and build a better facility. Charles, how is the ship guys funded? It obviously costs some money. It doesn't really cost that much. And while we were on a shared server, it cost $15 a month. And the Museum of Gaming History picked up the tab. And when, we, when I was here last year, I said sometime during the year, we're going to need to increase that amount, go to a dedicated server, and they said, no problem. So it's funded out of the Museum of Gaming History's budget. Um, if there are any other questions, I'll take them now. I've got a couple. George? When I look on the daily supplements, I'll look at a chip and I'll say, I saw this two days ago, a week ago, a month ago, and all it says is updated. 
any way to tell why it's updated or what was changed or what we missed or okay. Okay. Change I'll take that as a suggestion anytime it's something is changed on it we put a flag it's been changed we don't flag exactly what's been changed only that a change is made and that what that's what gets it on the list but maybe that's a suggestion we can do Neil approximately how many daily uses do we have I said we were getting too busy. We were running 20 to 25,000 daily visitors to the trip ride. Okay. So we're going to adjourn. Um, we're going to have a couple of the administrators up at the door. They hand up the items. And thanks everybody for coming.